guys and welcome back to my channel and in this episode I want to cover um, my my one of my top three uh, uh, tools that blender has that um, that I use constantly so it's gonna be my top three uh, things that I mostly use when I'm using blender All right and uh, the first one that I want to um, cover is a modeling tool which is called the bisect so let's say I have this cube here and this tool I use a lot to um, to cut things and, and model and, and whatnot. And so let's uh, make this a little bit smaller. And the basic tool is going to get available when I go to edit mode. So if I go to edit mode, I'm going to get this new um, menu here. And the basic tool, you're going to find it under the knife um, tools over here. So if you press and hold, you're going to see bisect here, right? And uh, how this works is I need to have something selected on my mesh. So I usually select everything by pressing A and I select everything, right? Since I'm in edit mode. And with the bisect, um, before I use it, I wanna make sure that I go to my tool options here. I see bisect that is selected and I wanna do fill and clear order, right? What that does is when I use it and I click and drag, I can cut the mesh uh, using this straight line here like that, right? Now you see how this uh, poly gets filled up because I have fill here and a clear order. Um, the clear order option is just going to clear everything outside, outside the line here going up this way where this arrow um, you can see. So if I move this around, you, you can edit that, that as well, right? If I didn't have that on, let's try that again. I'll select everything and I try it and see it didn't do anything. It just clear, just go like that, which is pretty cool too, because you can have a, uh, a cut in there. But with the purposes that I use, that I, use um, I wanna make sure that I have clear order so you can make the cut and then fill, uh, so it fills the space that it cut. If I didn't have that, then that's gonna get, um, it's not gonna get filled like that. And for what, what I use it for, I don't, I don't want that. So I want to make sure that I have it filled. Once I have that in, I can, I can start cutting and, um, you know, do what I need to do. Um, but um, the cool thing is that you can make some really cool, sort of like stylized uh, rocks very easy uh, with this tool. Let's so show you here. Let's do something like that. Maybe it's this. so on right and then you can go in and you can use another tool uh, use the bevel and then start beveling some of these um, some of these edges a little bit if you want and so there's a uh, block rock that you can use and of course you can always duplicate this and let's say you want to get a more broken up uh, block you can do the same thing so we'll go to the basic tool and let's say we're going to cut this in half here let's do that and that and there's another version of that right so it's very powerful um, to get something really quick and I have here some examples of where I use it. Um, so with this 3D kit that, um, that I recently made, uh, you can get this 3D kit on my marketplace or um, my Gumroad, and it actually comes with a tutorial, like a full tutorial to create um, to create um, this set of images that I made. But I use that tool a lot in, in all these kits that I'm making, and uh, you can you can see them right here and. I usually go around when whenever I have the scene set up. I usually go around with the bisect tool and cut things up to make them look more damaged or or anything like that. It's just a pretty powerful tool. Um, so that would be the first. The second one is more of a, a user interface type of uh, tool, and is the uh, quick favorites in in Blender. So in quick favorites, you have a menu called quick favorites, 
and if you press Q on your keyboard, you usually get a, um, a little pop-up menu here like that, right? And uh, in order for you to put things on that menu, you have to uh, right-click on them and add them to your quick favorite. So let's just say that I want to, let's say I'm on edit mode here, and I'll select everything. And I actually want to have my loop cut on my on my uh, quick favorites. Um, so I don't have to always constantly go to this menu and select it and, and whatnot, right? So I'm going to right click on it and it says add to quick favorites. And once you add that in, once you press Q, you're going to see it right here, a loop cut. Now, you already see that I have some in there, right? But what I like about this is that um, the menu that pops up, it's going to be depending on the mode that you are on. So Right now, I'm on object mode, and if I press Q, I only have these two options. And I have FBX and OBJ, which is my imports. Um, since I do a lot of imports, um, you know, I waste a lot of time. Not waste, but I, I use more clicks going to file, import, finding the, the file uh, type, whether it's FBX or FBJ, and then go to that window to select it. So instead of doing all that, I just press Q select the file, FBX, and then I'll go find it. Or OBJ, and I'll go find it, right? So it's a lot, it's a lot less clicks um, that I need to do in order to get there. But that's in object mode. Um, but if I go to edit mode, you see I have a lot more options here, right? Because uh, these options are available only in edit mode. And so um, I think it's a very powerful uh, thing to get used to using. Uh, because you can save a lot of time um, doing it. And so that's the second one. That's the quick favorites. And you can add everything, anything you want um, from, you know, like anything on your menus uh, by just right-clicking on it. So let's just say select random. You want to select random stuff. Uh, you can right-click on it, add to quick favorites, or assign short code if you want. Um, add to quick favorites, and then it's going to be on your quick favorites menu. All right. Okay, so that will be the second one. And the third one is going to be a texturing um, tool. And let's actually head over this file here. Um, so this is a very simple um, uh, kit that I did for rocks uh, with like different types of textures. And, you know, they're not high poly. They're just very simple. I actually uh, modeled them using the Bisect tool because uh, I wanted to have something very light in mesh and um, just concentrating on the shape of the rocks. And I wanted to have, you know, multiple types of textures depending on the environment that I was using it. And I use these constantly, you know, I can stretch them and, um, you know, do all that stuff. So I'll show you that in a minute. But um, you can actually get this kit um, if you want it over at my marketplace or Gumroad. And, uh, you know, you'll get all five um, different textures. They're going to be um, 4K or 8K textures. You also get the model and um, you, can, you can play around with them and, and whatnot. And as you can see, you know, the textures are not perfectly placed or anything. It's just, this is just sort of like a sketched um, rocks um, um, formations that I did just to have something as base. Um, as, you know, something very easy and um, easy to move around since they're very low poly. All right, so um, so let's just say, actually, um, let's get the main textures here. Let's get this few. So I'm just gonna get this. And I'm gonna duplicate it in just so you can see what I'm gonna be doing. And let's hide everything else. And so let's just say I'm, I'm gonna be using these ones and the tool that I'm going to be using is called uh, Project From View. And Project From View, if I go to Edit Mode, right, and let's say I have this poly, and I press U uh, for my um, UV mapping options. I have all these options here, but um, this one called Project From View. Pretty much it's going to project the texture from the camera view that I have selected, you know, that I have right now. So. Let's just say I have this rock and I want to use it, but I want to have it, you know, stretched out. I want to have a different type of shape. And let's do this. 
And maybe I do... Maybe I do something like this. Change the change the silhouette a little bit. Something like that. Right, so now you can see that um, I changed the uh, let's move that a little bit over. I changed the uh, shape um, a little bit, right? And you can see that in some places the texture get like all stretched out like here, like on this polygon here. And here and here, right? And again, the texture in all these are not completely perfect, but um, you know, I like to have them as best as I can with the limited, uh, with the least amount of time, right? So you can see that over here is stretched out, and in some of the areas. So I, that's something that I could easily fix without going into substance or really working with the UVs and you know all that stuff and spending a lot of time. So one way to do that is with the uh, with the projection from view uh, option. So I already have that set up on my quick favorite since I use that a lot. But um, if you don't have it, you know, once once you are on edit mode, um, you can just press U for UV mapping. Or if you go to here in the UV uh, options here, you're gonna see a project from view. Or if you press U, you're gonna see it here on project from view. But I have it on my quick favorite, so um, I have it right there. And what I'm going to do is, depending on the polygon that I have selected, I'm going to try to place my camera straight on facing that poly. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but uh, this is a very sort of like organic, so it has all these different angles. So it's going to be a little bit harder, but um, we'll do our best. So let's say I want to I wanna fix this one. I'm going to place my camera right here. Q, project from view, and that gets fixed. And I'll do the same thing from here. So let's just do this one, project from view. Actually, I want to grab these two, project from view. And I'm going to just go around and sort of like try to fix this whole thing as best as I can. Now, this is going to be tricky because I can't, you know, it's going to be hard, but it doesn't matter if there's like, if I'm being covered like this, the camera. As long as my angle of the camera is fine, I can do it from here, project from view, and then it gets fixed. Right. Um, and that one got fixed. And so, yeah, so that's a very, very quick and easy way to, um, let's, try, let's try this one, since it has something in there, project from view. All right, and let's try these. Let's project from view. All right, and there you have it. So now I can use this uh, my new shape of rocks. Um, I can use it without uh, worry about the texture being stretched out and you know all that stuff. Now all these textures are seamless, so. Um, that's good because you know they could get repeated without getting any seams or anything so um yeah that's the third tool i hope that really helps you guys and um uh, there's a lot more tools that i use constantly uh but i just wanted to cover these three on this <clears throat> these three on this episode but um, um if you want to see more of these little tricks and, and and tips on um how to save time and using all these tools uh let me know and i'll create more uh, more videos covering all the tools that uh, Blender has and that I constantly um, use. All right. Well, I hope that helps. And um, uh, if you like the video, feel free to share it and uh, like or comment or subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.